In this section, we're going to talk about probability distributions and how they're used to derive probabilities and calculate expected values for use in revenue management optimization models. Um, and if you view the series of videos on Littlewood's rule, um, you'll recognize this uh, inequality here and we, when we were discussing Littlewood's rule, we noted this probability statement. Let me just review this uh, very quickly. Uh, if you recall, Little, Littlewood's rule uh, states that um, the revenue management decision can be represented as this inequality. So imagine there's a revenue management analyst and his job is to choose between low fare customers that arrive before high fare customers or wait for high fare customers. So let's say this, this FL represents a low fare customer. The decision is should the revenue management analyst accept that low fare customer that's standing in front of them or turn that customer away and wait for the higher fare customer to arrive given that there's some probability that that customer will or won't arrive. And this was the expected value. This whole uh, statement here was the expected value of the higher fare customer, the expected value. And we said that, uh, you know, you need, there's, there's some way to calculate the probability that's used in this inequality. And that was gonna be the subject of these later videos. And we're gonna go into this in, in some detail. This is gonna be fairly technical um, you know, series of videos. If this is not your thing, then don't worry about it. Uh, but if you're an operations research person, you want to do research into either optimization or forecasting models and really understand the math behind the models, then you really do need to understand uh, the probability distributions and how they're used. Because whether it's a, uh, a leg model, like an EMSR model, or a network model, a, a, a linear program, a nonlinear program, a dynamic pro program, this expected value concept is present in all types of revenue management uh, models. So you really have to get this right. And the, the level of accuracy that you can calculate these probabilities will determine how effective the revenue management controls that come out of the optimization model are. So it's not good enough just to have a good optimization model. You have to be able to estimate the parameters of that model accurately. And that's where we, that's how we use the probability distributions. So we're going to, this can be a fairly big area. We're gonna narrow it down so that, you know, these, these videos don't get too long we're going to focus on the normal distribution, the normal distribution, one, because it's used pretty, pretty prevalently uh, in both uh, research and in um, actual production systems, normal distribution. But just for completeness, we're going to take a quick survey of some other distributions in this introductory video, and then in the next video and beyond, we'll stick only with the normal distribution and we'll go into that in some great detail. So let me just uh, take you through a quick survey. Let's uh, uh, scroll down here. So we're going to get into the normal distribution. I'm just gonna mention some other distributions that if you're gonna work in this field, you should be familiar with and you will come across. The, the first one is um, the gamma distribution. So when you're talking about modeling uh, demand. So the demand for an airline seat or the demand for uh, a fair product. Uh, the two distributions that you often see used are normal and gamma. So let's take a quick look at gamma. Uh, here we have an example of gamma and uh, I already wrote on this a little bit. Let me see if I can get the pen tool working here. Not the easiest thing to do. There it is. Okay, good. So the gamma distribution uh, looks like this. Dep de depending on the parameter settings, you get different shapes. And that's a nice feature of this distribution. It's a, it's a continuous distribution. 
And, you know, a continuous, it would be a continuous approximation of a discrete event, right? Demand is demand for uh, discrete seats. It's not continuous, but that's okay. Continuous distributions work pretty well for uh, discrete events. And this shape parameter allows you to choose, um, choose a set of parameters that fit the distribution pretty well. So of course you you know you want to choose a distribution that actually fits the data that is a pretty good uh, approximation of, of the true underlying distribution of demand. So it works pretty well for that. It also has this nice feature that on the you know below zero there is no positive probability of the event occurring. So remember the the height of the curve represents the probability of the event occurring in the gamut distribution the the function is not defined for uh, less than zero that works pretty well for demand because in the revenue management models and the optimization models we don't use any uh, probability that negative demand will occur it's only uh, the likelihood that someone will arrive there, there there's no concept of uh, negative demand so the fact that we don't have any positive demand or the, any positive probability in this distribution excuse me, don't have any positive probability of negative events in this distribution. It really works quite nice. The problem with this distribution is this point right here. It's also not defined at zero. So this distribution would say in all cases there's no probability of zero demand. So if you were going to use this to model um, uh, uh, passenger demand, it would say there's no probability of zero demand. And that's not true, right? There's many cases where on a flight, on a particular fare product, uh, there is no demand for a particular seat or a particular fare product. So you would have to deal with that. Um, and there's way to, ways to deal with that. I mean, every anything you choose, there's going to be some issues that you're going to need to deal with. So that's the gamma distribution. We're only going to, that's all we're going to say about it. Just know that it's out there and um, it's, it's a fairly common choice. So that's gamma. The next thing we're going to talk about is um, not for demand modeling, but for overbooking models. So we're going to talk about the binomial distribution, and this is very, very familiar, binomial. Oftentimes you'll see this used to model um, passenger show up or, or no show behavior. So if you're building an overbooking model, you're going to want some way to predict of the customers who have booked on the flight prior to departure, how many of them will actually show up. What's the probability of all those customers showing up, of all of them minus one, all of them minus two, all of them minus three. And in that way, you can set an appropriate overbooking level so that you can try to end up with as many people as you have seats. So let's say you have 100 seats on the aircraft and you want to overbook knowing that some of those customers won't show up and you actually get 100 customers at departure time. Um, one way of doing that, it's not the only way, but one way of doing that is using the di binomial distribution to model the, um, the probability that these customers will show up. So if you at or are at all familiar with distribution, you'll remember that it's usually used to, or you know, the best way to describe it is with, with coins. Um, so it's bi meaning two, nomial meaning number. So it models sort of like two of two, the probability that one of two events will show up or, or will occur. So if you had heads, you know, so remember if you had a fair coin, the probability that heads would show, would, um, would uh, uh, arrive would be 0.5 two heads in a row would be 0.5 times 0.5, three heads in a row, 0.5, you know, 0.5 to the, what would that be, 0.5 to the third, um, uh, right? So um, you could, uh, you know, go as for as many events as possible, uh, as you want, you could use this a very simple formula to get that probability. And what the application to show up behavior is, if you had a series of, of customers, you might say, what's the probability of the first customer arriving, the second customer arriving, the third customer arriving, the fourth, all the way up to 100 or 110. And you would multiply these probabilities together, just like you're multiplying the likelihood that a heads would come up. So instead of heads or tails, 
you're you're probably you're modeling the um, uh, will somebody will show up or no show. So there's two likely outcomes, you know, show up or no show, and you you could use that probability uh, to predict whether all customers in a series will show up because in overbooking it's not you're not just concerned about the 101st customer showing up you want to know if the 101st customer will show up and the probability that all 100 behind them will show up too because that's where you need to make a decision on overbooking right if only if only 90 people were going to show up you don't uh or um well let's uh, go a little bit off track there but um you want to know that the um, all 101 customers will show up or 102 customers will show up. So binomial fits that distribution pretty well. Uh, the, the next distribution that kind of follows that is the multinomial. So instead of two numbers, you have you know, two or you know, multiple and discrete events, multiple, multiple events. Multinomial is getting... Um, a lot of attention in research these days. It's it's not a new concept, but it's used for discrete choice modeling, discrete choice modeling, or um, customer choice, consumer choice modeling, discrete choice. And what this what this distribution does is helps you model the choice a customer will make based on a um, a number of things they can choose from. So let's say you wanted to predict what a customer do when presented with a certain number of options. So, and this is more sort of realistic than the more traditional demand models. Uh, a, a discrete choice model will say when a customer is on a website and they're looking at you know three or four different airlines, a few different fares, different types of service, nonstop versus connect, uh, different quality of products, they make their choice based on all of those attributes. And so if you're going to predict their behavior, it shouldn't just be based on what they've done in the past, but what they've done in the past given the other options that were presented to them. And the multinomial is a, um, a distribution that works pretty well uh, for that kind of uh, model. The last one we're going to talk about and we're going to finish up here is the Poisson distribution. Poisson I see a lot, um, not in the actual optimization models, but in simulation. So a Poisson process is a nice way to model the uh, arrival rates of customers in a simulation model. So if you're, if you're working on um, revenue management optimization models and you're, you're testing and comparing different models, you need some sort of simulation environment and you need to you need to feed these your simulated customers into the environment and the Poisson process is a nice way of modeling that arrival behavior um, it's pretty common in simulation and um, it, it works uh, pretty well those are all the distributions we're going to talk about today um, there are more but um, these are the ones you will come across quite frequently in revenue management. Once in a while, you might see something like a Weibull uh, distribution, but, um, and it, you know, there's other things that people will try, but these are the ones that come up a lot. Again, we're gonna talk uh, in depth in, uh, about the normal distribution in the next series of videos.